sorry I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Ugh, listen, you two. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit-chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. Oh, hey, Chief. Ha, <laughs> Dia! What are you doing here? And well, well. Didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm-hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Ozfan for more info. No kidding. Huh. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Ruksha's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumero City to begin bolstering its defenses, so people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Just recently, the Academia lost something, and there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you can head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try- Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me, if you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you'd best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Aramites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like Retake Sumeru for King Deshret. Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. You bet they are. <sighs> King Deshret's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandon their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. Well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Thanks, Dia! And you too, Asfan! Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next.
Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Good, then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. this. The show begins. Thank you. 
is close enough. Happy to have Happy to be gone. A reward on the road. Answer from this world?
The show begins. Ah! Oh. 
answer from this world? You are not oh, welcome yes. here. Come <laughs> on. 
Come and have a good look yourself. Traditional spices of the highest quality, made with pride and experience. <laughs> You've got a deal. I can't thank you enough for always looking after my business. Believe me, I'm not making this up. Several Eremite mercenary groups are nearly in open conflict. But does the core of 30 care? <sighs> and that's not all. Did you know that... Wow! Talk about hurly-burly! This place is busy! Oh, guess that's only to be expected for the largest port in Sumeru. Uh... Maybe it's because of what Dia told us earlier, but... Paimon can't seem to shake the feeling that there's also danger lurking in these crowds. Ooh. Let's get our bearings so we can start looking for leads. We know that whatever the Academia lost is related to the gods. But other than that, we don't have much else to go on. Hmm. Asfa told us to try posing as Academia students while asking around. Paimon checked the Akasha on the way here, and the Academia doesn't seem to have any research facilities in Port Ormos. Paimon doesn't get it. Won't we look even more suspicious going around saying we're Academia students and asking about the stolen item? Well, given all the people that come through here every day, if there's any information to be found, Paimon bets we could find it in the market. Let's ask around and see what we come up with. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, how can I help you two? Ah, uh, hi there. We would like to ask you a question. Um, do students from the academia ever come to Port Ormos? <laughs> of course. Especially around this time of year. Students from Sumero City that are about to graduate often come to Port Ormos to cut loose a little. Many people often talk about how hard it is to get accepted into the academia, let alone graduate. But those who finish their studies and go on to become full-time researchers at the academia have it even harder. Sure, we may not be Sumero City, but Port Ormos offers beautiful scenery and a stress-free environment. Some even say it's good luck to come to Port Ormos, so students and researchers come flocking here when things get to be too much at the academia. Ah, you see over there? Those are students from the academia. They've been looking worried and miserable ever since they got here a few days ago. If you ask me, the life of a merchant is better. So long as the Akasha teaches us what we need, then life is good. Hmm. Those students seem to be discussing something. Let's see if we can listen in. I tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary-looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. There's been a lot of fighting between the different Aramite factions in Port Ormos. If we choose to move on our own, then it would be wise to steer clear of them. Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about King Deshred and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Regzar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? They're called Ein El Akmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Wait, come again? Don't you see? Many of the Aramites in Port Ormos deal with trading this kind of thing. They're usually pretty wary of outsiders, but not so with students of the academia. It's because the kind of goods that students are looking for aren't the kind of goods that Aramites are after. As long as they know you're a student, then deals can be made. I've heard that Ein El Hakmar likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, if you're willing to part with half a million Mora, they'll give you info on anything. W wait did you say half a million? If information alone costs that much, then how could we ever afford to buy what we're looking for? 
<sighs> I guess we might as well give up on trying to graduate this way. I wouldn't worry too much. Our field of research is very niche. Who else could possibly be after that kind of shady knowledge? I bet it's practically worthless to anyone aside from us. Well, I guess that makes sense. Then the only thing left for us now is to find a way in. Why don't we all just pool our money together and pay for the information? Whoa! Did you hear that? A niche field of research and shady knowledge? It all sounds pretty suspicious to Paimon. Is knowledge something people just buy and sell like that? So, what's your plan? Wait, didn't you hear what they just said? Buying information is going to cost us half a million mora! Have you lost your mind? Oh, all right. Paimon never thought she'd agree to parting with that kind of mora. But if you know what you're doing, then we should give it a shot. we heard those students talking about. Let's find a seat somewhere and see if we... Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. So, they think that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boss? Ha! Huh. Once we reclaim the power of King Deshret, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time, so we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, he'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh, all these guys talk about is King Deshret, so they're probably the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata. That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when King Deshred exacts vengeance on Sumeru, and all of them shall be punished. Yeah, Paimon was wondering what they meant too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. Who are you? What do you want? The Traveler? Uh, now's probably not the time to talk about that! Didn't the students say Aramites are wary of outsiders? A student? Huh. What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? Ah, well if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? This is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, that's right! We heard you mention King Deshret just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Uh... Archaeology students! <laughs> Fine. 
Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of King Deshret. Years ago, King Deshret founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present-day Sumeru. King Deshret was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed King Deshret's civilization, and our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. King Deshret isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mark my words, our god shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of King Deshret. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Huh? <sighs> you again? <laughs> Deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more you're worth. Hey! Shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day, I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you, don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tevat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Eremite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 mora to them. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh... Well... <laughs>
Someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Whoa, did you see that? He not only got us our Mora back, but sent the Amorites running too! Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions! He was that way! After him! What do you want? No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your Mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. All right. Goodbye. through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Ahem... Certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? A student. <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. She's really strong. Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. She doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Maybe not, but she can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... I'll... I... Uh, um... From guys like that. Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> All right. I accept. Got a pen and paper? If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 Mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look. If you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. We know it's connected to the academia somehow, and that not only do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? You know almost everything there is to know but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. Huh? I might can't tell what it is. It looks like some kind of ornament. This is a knowledge capsule. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. That's amazing! It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha, and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, 
There will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. Ah, oh, so that's your true objective. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. She's guarded against people from the Academia because most of her wares don't comply with Academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. <sighs> Fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. But we only just saw our knowledge capsule for the first time. We don't know how to tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Oh, well, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference in their quality? Same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with elemental sight. How'd it go? Did you see anything? Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. That's because knowledge originates from Ermensoul, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in dendro energy. However, some canned knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive. Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any more left over, just keep it. Oh, 
And be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? <sighs> they belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. Okay, then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Looking at what Al Haytham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. Hello. What are you two looking to buy? Wait. Are you sure you're remembering that right? Uh, Hyman doesn't think it was that on the paper. <laughs> what a unique palette. We have unripe horror fruits, but we usually keep them in the back. I'll have someone escort you. Following the paper got us past the first round. Ronak, these two want to buy unripe horror fruits. Show them to the warehouse. Got it. You two, please follow me. You two have a fascinating fashion sense. We haven't seen a customer wearing a Sumeru rose for quite some time. Uh, hold on. Let me think. Sumeru rose means common merch. Um, no. Look again. We're obviously wearing morning flowers. Ah, my mistake. I do apologize. Whew. That pop quiz sure was scary. Ah. The warehouse is up ahead. Please follow me. Before I retrieve your products, I need to confirm a few things. Uh, please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our horror fruits were taken by mice. Hold on, that's not right. Taken by mice means they sold out. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. But as things currently stand, we won't be able to fulfill your order. Why don't you two think things over? He's cautious of us. Let's take a closer look at the paper that Al Haytham gave us. Before I retrieve your products, I need to confirm a few things. Please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our horror fruits were taken by mice. <laughs> Thanks. If better goods come in, you'll be the first to know. You look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? Heatstroke is the answer to erudition. Ugh, eating something that causes heatstroke sounds horrifying. Ah, uh, um. He's cautious of us. Let's take a close. Before I retrieve, uh, please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our horror fruits were taken by mice. <laughs> you look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? Yep, that's the right answer. But eating hara fruit that makes your head and ears ring sounds like a bad life decision. Would you like your hara fruits to be packaged in the Sumeru City or Port Ormo style? Wow, you two sure are generous customers. We'll be sure to package your products beautifully. Okay. 
Everything has been confirmed. Miss Dory is waiting for you up at... Shoot! It's the Matra! Run! What? The Matra? Where? I'll hate them if we're done for if they catch us! We gotta get out of here! We don't know this area, so let's follow that informant! If you're hiding from the Rishbalan tiger, come this way! Another password! Huh? Oh, that voice came from Here, over here! You can stop running now. So you were the one who was calling out to us just now. But, uh, are we definitely gonna be safe here? These two good customers wish to buy some horror fruit, Miss Dory. And if there's nothing else, I'll just excuse myself. Oh, very good. Thank you. Huh? Wait, you're Dory? I'm unsure that you'd look a whole lot scarier. Hey, what are you trying to say, Princess Peabrain? I can be scary enough when I need to be, believe you me. If you don't watch what you say, then you can forget about doing any business. But it seems you two have actually done pretty well so far. Not only did you manage to find the informant, your reactions were also pretty sharp. You don't really look like criminals or anything, but I bet my Mora that you've been involved in some shady dealings, haven't you? Uh, Paimon's not sure if that's supposed to be- 
to be a compliment, but we'll take it. I can't risk doing business with people who start huffing and puffing after just a few paces. No matter how much more they might have. Not only will they get caught by the Matra, but they'll also get us into trouble. As decent folks trying to run an honest business. We don't need any of that. Wouldn't you agree? So that's why I prefer to have customers like you. It's your first time here, but don't worry. I won't ask too many questions. Even if you wish to buy enough knowledge capsules to decorate your house with, please, knock yourself out. As long as you have lots of round, shiny Mora, then we're all good. Ah, yes! Of course, of course! Go ahead. Help yourselves. Voila! Wow! She has a trove of Cairn's knowledge. Whew. She'd probably be in serious trouble if the Matra caught her with all this. What kind of products do you seek, my dear customers? Uh, don't worry, I'm not interested in your reasons for buying. I can, however, offer some suggestions. Take this one, for example. An analysis of the sociological ideology and dialectics of the Hillichurls. Only three people in all of Tevat have ever studied it, making it extremely rare. It's on sale now for 350,000 mora. Yeesh, who would want to be an expert in that topic? Or how about the architectural styles and construction methods of Tevat in the early Argon War period? With this one, you can become an expert in historic architecture preservation and find an excellent, well-paying job in nearly any nation. Ooh, now this sounds like it could be useful. Two million mora, and it's yours. No discounts. Whoa, that's a lot of mora! Of course, you are free to pick whatever your hearts desire. The contents and price of each knowledge capsule are indicated in small text on the body of each one, down at the bottom. All right, let's try the method that I'll hate them mentioned. You've really got a good head on your shoulders, and quite the eye for quality. We'll take these, please and thank you. My oh my, you are blessed with a taste for both the exquisite and the extravagant. Customers like you are a rare breed, one in a hundred. No, one in a thousand even. Listen. I have a special offer for you two. If you spend just 100,000 more and more, you can pick any knowledge capsule of your choice up to a value of 1 million more. Say what now? Hey, did you hear that? Spend another 100k and we get a capsule worth a whole million. But all the can knowledge we just bought is easily worth half a million mora. If we spend just a little more, we can get something worth one million mora. Isn't that a fantastic deal? Think about it. We've gone to all this trouble to get this can knowledge. And so far, everything we've bought belongs to all Haytham. Aren't you even the least bit curious about how this whole can knowledge thing works? We're talking instant knowledge here. Don't you want to try it yourself? Come on, come on! We still have around a hundred thousand of Alhatham's Mora left. So let's put it to good use by finding something useful for you. Ahem, you've got a deal, Dory! We'd like to spend an extra one hundred thousand Mora. Excellent! And then please, select from this fine collection of canned knowledge over here. Uh, hold on a second. We could choose whatever we wanted. Why can't we choose the ones from over there? 
Oh, but my dear customer, the knowledge capsules over here are worth one million mora each. I'm sure discerning customers like yourselves will be able to find something to your liking. Please, take your time. Uh-oh, Paimon has a bad feeling about this. Let's use Elemental Sight again to check these. So, what did you see? So, they're all worth about the same amount? Well, anyway, the more has already been spent, so let's at least try to find something useful. Let Paimon take a look here. An introduction to traditional Sumeru brewing techniques, the art of growing spices, an overview of ancient runes. Oh, how about this one? Sword Fighting Techniques 8. Not sure we'd ever find volumes 1 through 7, but at least this knowledge should be useful, right? Let's go with this one. Dory, we'll take this one. All right, very good. I'm expecting some new goods in the next couple days, so be sure to check back again soon. Whether it's canned knowledge or anything else you need, bring your Mora to Dory and doors will open. Our feelings with Dory went smoothly enough. Let's head to Wakala Funduk and meet up with Alhatham. Hopefully now he'll finally tell us about what the Academia lost. Ha! Huh. You two made it. And from the looks on your faces, you were successful. Whoa, there's so many people to... Why would you pick this place as our meetup spot? Well, Wikela Funduk is under the Academia's control. Here. I came to Port Ormos under the pretense of conducting official business. You're a pretty daring guy. Relax. No one here is interested in anything we say, and the Macher won't come here. <sighs> okay, now. Tell me how your encounter with Dory went. Okay, we did what you asked. So, can you tell us about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost now? Before that... I have to ask, why are you two so intent on tracking it down? You don't have to answer, of course. Yeah, 
She just wants to meet the God of Wisdom and ask her about something important. We've been in Sumeru for a while now, but we still haven't found a way. When we heard that the Academia had lost something that might be related to the gods, we came here in case it turned out to be our lucky break. In that case, you're on the right track. A short while ago, the Academia lost a knowledge capsule in the desert. It's supposedly a divine knowledge capsule. Use it, and you'll gain the wisdom of the gods. Wow! There's really such a thing as that? Hey, if we find it, do you think we could learn how to meet the Dendro Archon? Ooh, or even how to find your brother? I highly doubt it has any mystical properties, but it does indeed exist. And it's right here, in Port Ormos. So, where exactly? That's what we need to find out next. I won't deny that. I am investigating because I'm curious as to what the Divine Knowledge Capsule truly is. As you know, the Eremites in Port Ormos also have their eyes on it. It is an extremely precious item. The knowledge contained within may bring great power or wealth to whoever has it in their possession. Several brigades have been vying for ownership of it as of late, but there is still no victor. My personal finances and connections cannot compete with those of the Eremites. After attempting various methods, I finally managed to reach a tentative agreement with several brigades. I agreed to forego ownership of the Divine Knowledge Capsule in exchange for the opportunity to study it. After all, there's no harm in understanding what it is. However, there are those who are less amenable to negotiation, such as those from Ayn al-Akhmar. They adamantly believe that the Divine Knowledge Capsule contains King Deshret's power, and that he will return to this world when they obtain it. They refuse to let anyone from the Academia tarnish their deity's soul. So you kept hounding them because they refused to cooperate with you? Yes. Ayn al-Akhmar isn't exactly wealthy, but its members are determined to get that capsule by any means necessary. To that end, they've resorted to many methods more foul than fair in order to amass sufficient funds. So, I've been sabotaging their business to force them into negotiating with me. The Divine Knowledge Capsule should be up for a secret auction within the next few days. Each brigade will place their own bid, and the prize will be covertly given to the winner. To ensure the capsule's security and to evade the Matra's notice, the winning brigade will not publicly disclose their victory. Unless I know whose hands the Divine Knowledge Capsule ends up in, my agreements with them will fall through. Dory is the most reliable source of information, but that avenue was previously closed to me. With you on board now, the situation is different. In other words, you wanted us to befriend Dory so you could find out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. Yes, you can say that. But this arrangement harms none of us. The day after tomorrow, go back to Dory and try to purchase information on the Divine Knowledge Capsule's whereabouts. If she has no information, wait two days and approach her again. If I get the opportunity to study the Divine Knowledge Capsule, I will relay my findings to you. Will that suffice as compensation? Okay, then we'll meet up in two days. Um, Alhatham, before you go, we actually bought a knowledge capsule for ourselves, but we're not sure how to use it. <laughs> you two want to try using a knowledge capsule? Sure, I can teach you. Doing so right under the Academia's nose is a bit problematic, though. What do you say we head to the outskirts of town?
All right. This place works. Show me the capsule you purchased. Here. Hmm. Sword fighting techniques eight. Huh. A combat class knowledge capsule. This class is something of a rare find these days, since most have been taken by the Aramites to augment their battle capabilities. Really? Ah, oh, yeah, what a great buy! If you want to determine the efficacy of this capsule, I can evaluate your combat ability. However, effects will likely be minimal if you already possess a high amount of strength. We can conduct a controlled experiment where you fight two battles, one before using this knowledge capsule and one after. While you fight, we can use an Akasha terminal to monitor your various physical parameters. There may be variances in your physical strength between the two tests, as well as a disparity in your opponent's abilities. But don't worry. I'll run statistical analyses afterward to mitigate any confounding effects. Wow! I hate them! You must have been one of those guys at the Academia who got top grades on everything! Um, Paimon's curious about something, though. You definitely weren't one of those students who needed canned knowledge to graduate from the Academia, right? So, why are you risking getting caught by the mantra for this capsule? When you are unable to understand a researcher's actions, most cases can be attributed to curiosity. This is but one theory. Mm, sounds like you're trying to avoid the question. Alright, let's begin the test. Just fight as you normally do. All right. I'll link your Akasha terminal to record data. The next step is to use this knowledge capsule. Hold it in your hand. 
I'll help you establish a connection with it so you can activate its power. It worked? All right. Time for round two. Fight with the same composure as before. Now, I'll start recording data again. Oh, Hatham, how's it going? Well, the knowledge capsule you purchased did improve her combat capability. During the second fight, her overall fighting performance increased by 0.073%. Wait, how much? Of course, this could be because she is so powerful that the capsule's contents were unable to produce a substantial increase. At the very least, this test allowed me to gain more insight into you two. Our deal seems increasingly worth my investment. I'm heading back to Wakela Funduk. I await your response in two days' time. This is Mora for when you ask Dory for information. Pay her as much as she requests.
friends. What can I do for you this time? You name it. Can knowledge, supplies, or anything else you need. I'll find a way to get it. Where there's a waterfall of Mora, there's a way. Can you really get us anything we want? Anything at all? Aha! Uh -huh. So it appears the canned knowledge alone is no longer sufficient for your opulent appetite. <sighs> then please oblige me. Tell me what you have in mind. Oh! <laughs> I knew customers with pockets as deep as yours would undoubtedly crave something more profound than ordinary canned knowledge. But you know, that kind of information isn't going to be cheap. After all, I had to work really hard to weasel my way into the auction site. And that's mentioned that if anyone found out that I was the leaker, I would be in big, big trouble. But how can we be sure your information is accurate? Paimon's curious how you just happen to have this kind of info the moment we need it. <laughs> because to me, anything of value is what I consider to be my supply. Therefore, I must always be aware of what's hot on the market in order to secure more sales. As for the information's authenticity, well, you've no need to worry about that. I used a camera to take a picture of the transaction. That way, no one can dispute it. It's always a pleasure doing business with such sterling patrons. <clears throat> now that you've paid in full, here's the scoop. The Divine Knowledge Capsule was purchased yesterday by a certain Misery, the leader of Ein El Ahmar. Ein El Ahmar? You mean the Aramites who worshipped King Deshrit? Ah, so you're already familiar with them. The group has done everything in their power to obtain the Divine Knowledge Capsule. After all, they believe it contains the power of King Deshret. That Divine Knowledge Capsule is unlike any other canned knowledge I've seen before. It was glowing bright red. The capsule is clearly visible in the picture I took. You can look for yourself. Thanks for the info, Dory. Please, it's my pleasure. It's all thanks to discerning customers such as yourselves that my efforts yesterday were not in vain. Please, don't hesitate to contact me if you ever need anything else in the future. Mora for Dory opens doors. Well, we figured out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. It turns out it ended up in the hands of Ein El Ahmar. Let's head back and talk to Al Haytham. Really? All right. Let's hear it. Dory even gave us evidence to verify the intel. Have a look. Huh, look at that. Clear as day. It must have taken some guts just to infiltrate the scene of the Aramite's transaction. But then, to get close enough to take a picture like this. Bold move, Dory. Very bold move. All right. The person in this picture is indeed Misery, the leader of Ein al Ahmar. And the glowing red capsule he's holding appears to be the Divine Knowledge capsule. In which case, if we play our cards right, when we confront them next week, we should be able to force them to show their hand. At first, Paimon didn't get why you were provoking these Ein al Ahmar guys. But now, it sort of makes sense. Everything's playing right into your hands. After we defeat them, we can finally have a serious talk with their boss and get them to lend us the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Thank you for your time and efforts. Take a few days off while I make some preparations. Let's meet up again on the afternoon of the arranged date, 3 o'clock sharp. See you then. Oh, Haytham sure is taking his time. Where could he be? Oh, there he is. 
<laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's head to the pier in front of Faro's lighthouse. Yep, let's go. I thought Sumeru would be different, but nope, everywhere's the same. I'll hate them. I knew you were crazy, but I didn't know you were crazy enough to actually show up. It was I who demanded that these negotiations take place. I was more worried that you might go back on your promise. But to your credit, it appears that you're sticking to your word. This is turning into quite an occasion. I also brought some backup. I assume you don't mind. Backup? Aren't you the brat from the restaurant the other day? You've come to support this lunatic because he helped you out? <laughs> Fine, your funeral. I'm not going to mince my words. Once we're done with you, you'll be nothing more than fish food. Get him, boys! Scum! <laughs> Boss! Finally! Did you use it? Great! Now we can... Do not impede our work. Is that understood, all Haytham? Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away!
It looks like he used the Divine Knowledge Capsule. You mean, the Divine Knowledge Capsule did that to him? Oh, yeah. You mean how some researchers go insane after getting knowledge from Ermensoul? I've heard of numerous incidents of researchers in Satyavada life going insane. The state that man is now in suggests that this is a similar situation. This divine knowledge capsule does appear to be linked to the gods, but beyond that, it doesn't seem anything like the rumors suggest. Possessing it doesn't grant you divine wisdom or power. Did you hear what he said? World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? took him away, then that means the Academia got the Divine Knowledge Capsule back, too. Ugh, what a shame. We were so close. Still, Paimon didn't expect the Divine Knowledge Capsule would be so dangerous. Imagine if we tried to open it. Oh, who knows what would have happened to us? As things stand, there is no reason for me to remain in Port Ormos. I believe our collaboration has also reached its end. Oh, we were so busy trying to find the Divine Knowledge Capsule that Paimon forgot to ask you something. Since you're a member of the Academia, do you have any idea how we could go about meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali? Truthfully, I don't. Lesser Lord Kusanali appears to exist outside of Sumeru's entire administration. Most of the time, you wouldn't know she exists at all. Moreover, since the Academia possesses the Akasha, a symbol of our deity's wisdom, scholars have no reason to desire to make contact with the deity herself anyway. Uh, everything about Lesser Lord Kusanali is such a mystery! I'm heading back to the Academia. How about you two? Uh, it's almost the day of the sub Zero's festival! Maybe we should head back too. We've been rushed off our feet over the past few days, so maybe a little rest and relaxation will do us good. Then we'll part ways here, I'll hate them. Until we meet again. Hmm. Now, do I deal with this thing first? Or should I produce the report that the higher-ups require?
Time to go to work. <laughs> Take this! Verdict is... We'll need more where that came from. Oh, 
I'll keep this close. Let the show be... Are you... <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. You've been hiding. Yes. Retribution! I'll keep this close.
ashes. Prepare to be blown away.
Zero's festival, right? Let's hurry and find dinner's on. Paimon thinks. Just as promised. Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. <laughs> Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. Paimon's sure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the festival will also have a good time. Speaking of which, um, did you manage to make your way to Port Ormos? Discover anything over there? Of course we went! A lot of things happened there. <sighs> I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. If there is another chance, I would love to join. <sighs> My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. Dropping. It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of the job. It's all right, Dia. I merely said I would like to go. I know better than to think my body could handle it. <sighs> the festival's tomorrow. I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. So Dia, please take some time to relax. I'll be fine. Mm, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. Don't worry, my guardian knight. <sighs> okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are gonna try to take advantage of that. Ah. Oh, uh, you two must be exhausted from your long journey back to the city. Uh, my apologies for not realizing this sooner. I've already prepared a room for you to rest. Please follow me. <laughs> <laughs> 